Developing and manufacturing a new electronic hardware product is no simple goal. But do you really need a huge budget that requires professional investors, or do you need to risk your own financial security? One entrepreneur may only spend a couple thousand dollars to develop a product, while someone else might spend hundreds of thousands of dollars developing something very similar. So what's the difference? And how can you get your new electronic product developed without risking your financial future? Can you realistically bootstrap a hardware startup? That's what I'm going to be answering for you in this video. So the simple answer is yes, it's definitely possible to bootstrap a hardware startup. The two biggest variables for feasibly bootstrapping a hardware business are you and your founding team and your product. The best way to lower the cost of product development is to avoid paying for it entirely. Your biggest product development expenses are going to be engineering fees. And for most products, the prototyping costs are minimal compared to the engineering fees. There are a few ways to develop a product without paying any engineering fees. Option number one is you do the development yourself, whether you already know how or if you have to teach yourself the skills first. Option number two is to bring on technical co-founders to do the development for you. Option number three is to work with students at an engineering university. And option number four is to convince a manufacturer with an engineering department to develop your product for you. So if you and your co-founders have the ability to do the product design yourself, then you can develop your new product quite cheaply. Of course, in this case, you're trading time in order to save money. This means you'll probably have less time and attention for other critical activities like product market validation and marketing. Odds are, if you're bootstrapping the development, then you're also working a day job. So the time you have to work on your project will be more limited. If you have a family, well, then your time is even more limited. This means you're going to have to be content with slower progress. But in most cases, that's okay since big mistakes typically happen when you try to move too fast. Of course, if your product is in a fast-changing market segment with lots of new innovation, then you'll need to move faster or find a different product to pursue. In most cases, I'd suggest you find a different product to pursue because it will be very difficult for you to compete with bigger players in regards to development speed and engineering budgets. Entrepreneurs with few technical skills are going to spend the most money and take the most financial risk in most cases because they don't have the ability to design their own product. If that sounds like you, then I'd probably suggest you find a technical co-founder if possible. If you do end up outsourcing most of the product development and you don't have a technical co-founder on your team, then I'd suggest you hire an independent engineer to help you review any work done by your primary developers. If you happen to have lots of experience with product development, that's fantastic and your path through development will be a lot less expensive. At a minimum, you're going to need to know electronics design, enclosure design, and firmware programming. But that's an unusual set of skills for any one single person, even an engineer. So odds are you're going to need to still fill in a few gaps in your skill set with outside help. For example, you may know electronics design and programming, but you have no idea about enclosure design or injection molding. Or maybe you're a software developer who doesn't have any experience with hardware design. Or maybe you're good at a maker level projects using off the shelf development kits and 3D printing, but you don't have any experience with custom product design for mass production. I'm an electronics engineer. So when I was developing my own product years ago, I initially outsourced the development of the plastic enclosure. I went through two different mechanical engineers and I probably spent close to $10,000 while constantly being frustrated that they weren't working nearly as fast as I wanted. So I eventually decided to just teach myself how to do 3D modeling for injection molding. And this was one of the best decisions I made for my project because it ended up saving me a lot of time and money. No one works harder and faster than a highly motivated entrepreneur. It's definitely possible to bootstrap an electronic product business without taking on tons of financial risk but you have to be willing to either learn how to do most of the design yourself and or entice others to join you. Non-technical entrepreneurs will have to either invest a lot of money 
or entice technical co-founders to come on board since they can't do any of the development themselves. But being a technical co-founder or a technical founder also comes with its own set of risks, primarily overly focusing on development while neglecting everything else. One of the biggest keys to making it with bootstrapping is to simplify your product as much as possible for at least the first version. The best strategy for most people is to develop the early versions of the product yourself, then use that version to get outside funding. For example, I designed a very early version of my own product that was that was quite crude, but it was an, it was good enough to get a major retailer interested in my product, which then helped me get a manufacturer interested who then invested over $100,000 to make my product ready for manufacturing. There are lots of funding options besides taking on greedy investors who will take a big chunk of your company. My favorite option is to pre-sell your product, either through a crowdfunding platform or on your own site. A successful crowdfunding campaign is fantastic product market validation, which drastically lowers your financial risk. But it, of course, also provides you with much needed capital. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video here where I break down all of the costs required to develop, scale, and manufacture a new electronic product.